In today's video, I'm going to be showing you streaming video over these really cheap NRF 24L01 radios. This is actually a follow-up to one of my previous videos from a couple of days ago, where I established a full-blown computer network over these. I used a piece of software that I wrote called NerfNet to create a virtual network tunnel between two Raspberry Pi computers. Well, in the last video, I said that surely video would be out of the question. 90 kilobits per second was the performance I had achieved, and it just wasn't going to cut it. Well, I made some improvements to the software and have now almost hit 300 kilobits per second, and video streaming is very much on the table. So stay tuned, and let's get started. So let's just start with a quick demo of this running on my desk. Here you can see the two radios separated by a short distance, uh, streaming video from one to the other. I'm using mPlayer to display the video directly on the frame buffer so you can ignore the tearing issues that we're seeing here, but this is working. You know, we're streaming relatively decent quality audio from one Raspberry Pi to another uh, across a short distance. And I think that's really cool, especially considering that the radios are only about a dollar each and uh, fairly low power. Now that the software has stabilized, I decided to tidy up the hardware and switch to radios with external antennas. I used some Captain tape to hold the radios to the top of the Raspberry Pis. The next step was to take some USB power banks and put NerfNet to the test with some outdoor range testing. NerfNet is now stable enough that it can be configured to start automatically as a systemd job on boot. Here I am doing a quick test to verify that the secondary radio came up and that I am able to ping it. Here's the same test from indoors repeated outdoors, just to verify that the initial connection still works and that it's strong enough to support streaming video, despite the fact that we've changed the environment. Everything is looking good here, and I think it's time to start moving the radio a little bit further away to see what happens to the connection. I did these tests in a parking lot near my house and used signage and lamp standards as a place to relocate the secondary radio to. The distance is around 10 to 15 meters away and the link is still happy. I decided to push the envelope and move to a further location, this time nearly 60 meters away. The link was still solid, but the error rate did increase. This resulted in more retransmissions. I was able to stream video, but with a few drop packets and visual artifacts. SSH and ping were both working great though. Here's a quick video showing the streaming video from a distance. Things worked relatively well, but there was occasional packet loss, which would result in a visible issue in the stream. This is still impressive, all things considered. These radios are super cheap and were never really designed to stream relatively decent quality video over this great distance. So I think it's, it's pretty cool. So at this point, and especially if you watched my last video, you're probably wondering what changed that allowed me to triple the throughput of this link. The first thing that I did was add sequence IDs to the on-air packets. These allowed the radios to let each other know that it received a previously sent packet, and this really helped to increase the stability of the link. Uh, without this, it was really unclear whether the packet had made its way to the other node, and whether we should accept a fragment of the packet, or drop it, or write it to the tunnel, and so on. The IDs make that super clear, and if you skip an ID, you simply retransmit. So it's a very simple approach to solving the issue of dropping bytes on the air as a result of these cheap radios. The next step was to clean up how I was using the RF24 library. I was originally going to write a new driver, but realized that it would be a bit more work than I was willing to put in for a weekend project. The main improvement that I made was to call transmit standby. Once I added this, I was able to remove artificial delays on the path of publishing packets, which increased the throughput of the link. Once I had the protocol figured out, I decided to replace the protocol buffer messages with a hand-packed packet. I did some binary hacks to get the message down to just two bytes of overhead per 30 bytes of packet content. The first byte contains two transaction ID nibbles that are always greater than zero. A zero value in this byte has a special meaning, which is to reset the connection. The second byte contains the remaining number of bytes in the network frame, clipped to 255. If this ever drops to 30 or fewer bytes, the payload is accepted, completed, and written to the network tunnel. This allows 30 bytes of network traffic per transmission, which is pretty good. And in addition to all of these changes to the protocol, I tuned the use of the radio. I decided to use a smaller CRC, use a 3-byte address instead of a 5-byte, and faster retries. All of these improvements combined together resulted in nearly triple the performance. I suspect that there is probably room to go, but I think that we're getting up to the limits of the on-air protocol, which I think is great. Um, I think I've you know, achieved my goal of the weekend project here of trying to use these radios to do something that they clearly were not designed to do, and it was a blast. So once again, that's NerfNet. I finally achieved my goal of streaming video over these little cheap radios, and it's been a real blast to work on over the weekend. Um, as usual, software steals the show. You know, a few tweaks here and there resulted in a huge improvement in performance. I suspect there's still room to go, but I think we're getting up to the limits of how good this thing can possibly be. 
Um, but that's all I've got for now. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you could subscribe and leave a like. They really motivate me to do this more often. And uh, if you want to leave a comment with any questions, I do read them and I'll try and answer them to the best of my knowledge. So, you know, definitely go ahead and do that. But that's all I've got for you for now. So with that, I will see you next time.